Well, welcome to our online gathering. We are here again another Sunday morning. We are grateful that you're joining us and you have joined us. Maybe you've joined us over the last number of weeks and we pray you'll continue to do that. We hope that you'll enjoy uh, this way of fellowshipping together, although different to in person. We are grateful that we have the means to do this. Um, we would love for you just to put a thumbs up or to uh, just say hello in the chat if you can. Um, maybe even tell us where you're watching from. I know some of you will just be watching from just down the road, but we would love to uh, even hear from you and from those who are watching from further afield. So maybe do that in the comments now if you can and say hi to each other as we uh, try and build community online as we have been over the last number of weeks. We love that you have joined us. Maybe you're joining us for the first time. Well, welcome to Nakani Baptist Church's online gathering. Pray that you'll enjoy these few minutes together as we fellowship and as we open God's word and as we sing together as well. Uh, we pray that this will be a blessing to you and a, an encouragement, maybe a challenge as well as we open God's word in a few moments' time. So I want to commit to the Lord our time together. I want to pray just for a moment as we do that and then we will sing together. Um, Simon will lead us in a hymn but let's pray first and then we'll lead straight into that song father we commit this online gathering uh, to you we ask that you would take it and use it for your glory and your honor we pray that this would be a time where the christian is encouraged and edified we pray that those who do not know you would be challenged by your word and all that is done and said today we pray lord we ask that you would just carry us through these moments as we come away from a, a very busy week Help us to settle and to enjoy this Sunday morning uh, as we, uh, in a strange way at the present time, join together uh, to worship. So continue with us. Help us by your spirit, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So as I said, we're going to go into the song now. Let's take a few moments to do uh, that and sing through as, as the words come up and to uh, enjoy these moments as we just settle into the presence of God and as we uh, quiet ourselves before we uh, continue through our online gathering.
your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. I'm covered in your love. Your grace is enough for me. For me. Well, thanks, Simon, again uh, for playing for us and leading us in worship. Uh, we thank you for all that you do at home. Um, isn't that so true and so wonderful that his mercy is more? Titus 3 and 5 says this. He saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. See, God has called his children to himself uh, because of his great mercy upon us, not because of the things we have done, which we will look at in a few moments' time as we continue through the book of Ephesians, but because of his great love and because of his great mercy and because of his grace upon our lives. So we have much to praise him for and thank him for in these times. So I want to take a moment again to just bow our heads in prayer to pray and give thanks for these things and to pray for what is going on around us as well in these days. So let's just pray together. Father, we are so amazed by your love and grace and mercy upon our lives. Lord, we are astounded at how you would love us, those who are so unlovable and those who are wretches, who are unclean, yet you come and you reach for us. You reached for many of us and you've called us to yourself and you've cleansed us and you've made us right before you. Lord, we thank you for your love towards us and your work in our lives. Lord, we thank you for your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who you sent, who lived a perfect life, who died on that cross that we may have life. Lord, may we seek him today. May we glorify him in all that we say and do. Lord, we look to you in these days as we see so much going on around us that is scary Lord, we're in fearful days, but Lord, we thank you that we don't need to fear like the world fears because we have a God who is in control of all that is going on. So we thank you for that. Father, help us to be reminded of that day by day. Lord, we pray that that would be uh, on the, in the minds of those who are uh, looking after us and serving us so well in this country, those who are on the front lines in many different capacities. Lord, we pray that you would continue to give them strength and that you would remind them of that. Lord, in these days we pray that you would call many to yourself, as many are looking beyond themselves, thankfully, to you and to what you are doing. Lord, help them to see you and your wonderful love and grace that you uh, give so freely. So Lord, we uh, are so thankful that we have you in these days. Lord, we ask that as we go through and as we uh, week by week try and find new routines and as we juggle family life and work life and uh, all the new things that we have now got to put in place. We, help, we pray that you would help us to find new routines and new rhythms. Lord, that we would uh, make the most of our time. Uh, Lord, that we would enjoy our time with you, that we would establish new habits maybe. Help us to do that in these days, we pray as well. Lord, we pray for those who are shut in and those who are unwell this, these days. Lord, that you would touch them, that they would uh, have a quick recovery for those who are shut in and lonely I pray that they would know your presence even within our fellowship uh, those who we can call to mind right now we pray that they would be with, you would be with them and they would know your help carry on with us now we pray as we have the children's talk in just a moment Lord we pray that you would use that and the kids would be encouraged by that and they would enjoy that we pray and as we open your word uh, in uh, just a moment Lord that as we study it and as we read it even Lord, may it touch hearts and lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So it is uh, the KBC Kids uh, slot, and we ask again that you would bring your kids about um, around whatever device maybe you're watching at this point, um, at whatever time maybe you're watching it, maybe you're not watching it right now live. And just take a few moments to do this, and we're going to pass over to uh, John Burney as he shares uh, just a, a short... Uh, talk with the boys and girls. So gather around and uh, 
and enjoy this KBC Kids Talk. Hiya boys and girls. I'm sitting outside enjoying the sunshine, but like yourselves, I'm kind of imprisoned in my own home. Uh, no school, you're probably enjoying yourselves immensely, uh, but uh, of course we are not allowed really to wander out and about as we used to. So it's a pity I can't see you and uh, we can't talk face to face, but at least we can uh, talk uh, this way through the internet and through the web. I've got a friend with me I want uh, to know. I want. Do you know who this is? Yeah, he's a Mr. Man, isn't he? And he's Mr. Worried. Mr. Worried. Now, there are a lot of Mr. Worries about today, and Miss Worries and Mrs. Worries as well. And uh, Mr. Worry, well, he worried about it not raining because he thought the plants in his garden would die. And then he worried if it rained too much because he thought, well, uh, the, the, the rain would destroy the plants. Um, he worried, you know, uh, if there was no work uh, to do, and he would worry if there was far too much work to do. Uh, he worried about this and he worried about that. And you know something? None of the worries that he had ever helped him to do the jobs he had to do. The worry really produced nothing except more worry. The Bible talks about this and it talks about it in a way which really brings us really comfort from God and help from God and also brings us a challenge because we get worried about so many things, don't we? I don't know whether you're worried about school and about being at school or not being at school. Maybe you're worried about exams, no exams, so many things that could be worrying you at the minute and worrying your mum and dad and the folk in the church as well. But I want to tell you, I want to read to you something that Jesus said. And he said it in Matthew's Gospel and I'm going to read it to you now. Jesus says, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And Jesus reminds us here of something so important that God takes care of his children. At the back of our garden, we have a couple of little seed feeders for the birds. And it's good to see them in the morning, especially, and then later on in the evening, coming and eating the seed and so forth. But you know, sometimes I forget to fill up the seed carrier and it's empty. But the birdies still find food. They still get enough to go on. Why? Because you see, God provides for them. And he reminds us here, boys and girls, we are of more value than the birds because we are made in God's image. God made us to serve him, to love him, to love the Lord Jesus and to give our lives to him and to, and to use our lives, to live our lives in a way that brings glory and honour to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we do that, God has promised that he will provide for us. Well, I hope that you don't get too bored. Maybe if you do get bored, don't tell mommy or daddy because they've got wee jobs in the garden and wee jobs in the house and wee jobs in other places for you to do. God bless you and keep you safe these days. Bye. Well, for those of us um, who joined us last Sunday, we got stuck into... Uh, the first seven verses of Ephesians chapter 2. Um, and we took some time to consider how God, through Jesus, raises us from death to life. And so this week, uh, we look at verse 8 uh, to 9, just 8 and 9, just a very short passage today. However, I want 
uh, you to go there and open your Bibles as we once again read these verses. And I want to um, really read from beginning of chapter 2 through to uh, verse 9. So let's do that now. And so turn your Bibles, Ephesians 2, and we'll read verse 1 again, and just what we read last week, and then the other two verses. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of, of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Let's pray just for a moment. Father, help us as we think of these two verses, as we think of all we thought about last week, and as we now add these two verses on and see what these verses mean for us. Lord, help us to see that we cannot save ourselves, but it is Christ's work. So Lord, bless us and open our eyes. By your Holy Spirit we pray. Amen. So I would encourage you to, uh, if you haven't, then open your Bibles, if you have, to keep them open. Um, as we study Ephesians 2 and look at verse 8 and verse 9. So do that at this present time. Do open your Bible and go there as we look at these two verses together this week. Well, last week I told you a true story of the time that my brother and I were skiing and how in the valley, right under the shadow of the vast mountain where we were, we felt the debilitating cold and lifelessness of that place. But then how we were lifted by a ski lift to the summit where the sun broke the shadows, the heat of the day exposed itself to our skin and we were able to marvel at the glorious sight uh, on that summit, on that mountain. But that wasn't the only thing we wondered at. We also wondered at how far we had come. See, thousands of vertical feet from where we just were is now where we are. But the reality was that we didn't climb the distance ourselves. We didn't do it in our own strength, but a force outside of ourselves elevated us to such heights. And here's the reality that the Apostle Paul is trying to get the Ephesians to see, this church, that not only were we spiritually dead and now spiritually alive, but there was a force outside of ourselves that made us alive. Well, why? Why does he want them to see that? It's so that they can't boast in anything. So, Firstly, for us today, let's answer the question, how were we, or how do we, get saved? Well, Paul uses negative and positive answers here, doesn't he? So let's deal firstly with the negative. It says, you are not saved by works, verse uh, 9. Let's start in verse 9. It says, not as a result of works. See, to understand that we are saved not by our works is essential. See, there's a story uh, told of a frog which accidentally fell into a large jug of milk. It tried and tried to escape with no avail. There was, there was nothing that that wee frog could do but to keep paddling. Um, and it did so until it churned that milk into butter. And hey presto, saved itself by leaping from its self-made launching pad. Well sadly, many think of the frog's escape plan as a reality for themselves in this life. That if in this world we just keep paddling on, uh, if we just keep keeping on, we will be okay. We'll be alright when this life has expired. 
how many times have we heard, or maybe you've even said this, we'll keep on going. After all, I'm, I'm a good person. Not perfect, but there's a whole lot of people worse than I am. God knows I'm not perfect, but I'm doing my best. See, that may be okay for Kermit the Frog, but it's not the language of salvation. It's not the answer to how we receive God, God's great gift of salvation. See, this theory, which is what it is, this ideology is not a God idea. It's a hell idea. Born of the evil one that we looked at last week, established in the very weave of our culture, and now bought and believed by us. Yet it's all a lie. A lie that is leading us to a false hope and into a conscious separation from Christ in an agonizing place called hell. Well then, why is our salvation not accomplished by works? Or well, simply this, so that we cannot boast in ourselves. Verse 9, the second half of verse 9 says it. Oh, how we would, as I said last week, if we played the smallest part in moving ourselves from Death Valley to the glorious summit, if we were able in any way to make our dead bodies alive, we would boast about it every moment to everyone. See, if our own works saved us, there would be a great lineup of chest-thumping boasters, an endless line of good Pharisees. See, in Luke 18 and 11, it tells us that the Pharisees prayed things like this. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Basically saying, look at me, look at how good I am in comparison to these people. So this would be you and me. So praise God that we cannot and have not saved ourselves. But most importantly, if we could save ourselves by our own works, who and what does that make God to us? You see, God, he is perfect and righteous and merciful. He is loving and just. But here is us, and we are imperfect, we are unrighteous, we are unjust, unloving, and we are sinners. So who, if we believe we can do anything to attain our salvation, do we think we are? And who and what, as a result, does that make God and Christ? Well, I tell you, it makes God as ugly as one of us. And it makes Jesus' death worthless. So you and I have done nothing to attain our saved status. So never think you have or ever will. Imagine uh, that an airplane flies over the Atlantic Ocean and crashes a thousand miles west uh, of the coast of Ireland. Uh, in a plane, in that plane, there are three individuals. There's a great Olympic swimmer, there's an average swimmer, and there's someone who cannot swim at all. The Olympic swimmer, he jumps out of the plane, says, Follow me, I'll get you out of this, and takes off with an impressive front crawl. All well, the other two jump in after him. And after about 30 seconds, the non-swimmer goes down to Davy Jones's locker. It takes about 30 minutes then until the average swimmer joins him there. But the champion swimmer, he churns away for 25 hours, covering an impressive 50 miles. Well, only, only 470 uh, five more hours to go. He'll be at the shore in 19 days if he doesn't slow down. Well, what's the point of that story? See, d despite our best efforts, our paddling will never do, no matter how good we are. See, the distance is just too far, and we are all just too flawed. We can try, but it would be more beneficial to rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic. Well, let's move on. If it's not by works that we are saved, then how? Well, here is Paul's positive answer. It says this, we are saved, verse 8, by grace. It says, 
For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is a gift of God. So what is grace? Well, it's a gift of God, it says that. But it is something that is undeserved. It is something unearned. It is something unmerited. See, grace is the love of God going out toward the utterly undeserving. See, the grace that we see here is, of course, talking about forgiveness of our sin. And it's talking about the riches that are found in being in Christ. But let me say it again. It is a gift of God. And that means it's free. And the extension of the gift towards us is the same for the most undeserving person. The one that seems to deserve it most and the one who seems to deserve it least. There is no bias. There is no unfairness with whom it reaches. Oh, how we may live in a me and my culture. None of us can deny it. And so we easily forget that we live in it. This is my life and I will do what I want with it. This is my money and I will uh, do what I want with it because I earned it. This is just me and I will be who I want to be when I want to be. Some of these phrases and ideas are okay in the proper context, but never in the realm of salvation. See, the second half of verse 8 says, This is not of your own doing. It couldn't be clearer, could it? But see here that Paul says that we are saved by grace. Verse 8, through faith. See, there is no faith. If there is no faith, sorry, there is no grace and there is no salvation. In the Bible, faith and belief is the thing that God honours more than any single quality. Let me give you a few verses. Acts 16 and 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. John 1 and 12. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Acts 13, 39, and by him, everyone who believes is freed from everything from which you could not be freed by the law of Moses. No one has sins forgiven, peace with God, and goes to heaven until there is faith in Jesus. Well, maybe some of you are asking or wondering, what is faith? Well, let me tell you what it it isn't first. And it isn't just mere intellectualism for the Christian faith or for Jesus. True faith is belief and trust. What do I mean? What I mean by faith is both belief and trust. Well, with this I'm going to finish. It's just a, a story I want to share with you, a true story. During the 1900s, uh, Jean-François Gravelet, uh, or something like that, better known by his stage name, Charles Blondin, a Frenchman, was a, f- was a world-famous f- uh, acrobat. Born in France in 1824, Blondin became well-known while still a child. And as he grew older, his skills and showmanship brought him fame throughout Europe and America. And when in London once, he played the violin on a tightrope, 170 feet off the ground, and then did a somersault wearing stilts. <laughs> but his most spectacular feats were the crossing over Niagara Falls on a tightrope. 1,100 feet uh, long, 160 feet above the water. On one occasion, he took a stove on the tightrope, yes, a stove, and he cooked an omelette. On another, he pushed a wheelbarrow across while blindfolded. On still another occasion, he stood on his head. And that is why today in London, you can go and find Niagara and Blondin avenues. But in Blondin's most unusual stunt, he carries a man on his back across the rope, which was suspended over Niagara. 
he makes it to the other side. He sets the passenger down and turns to another man in the crowd and asks, Do you believe that I could do that with you? To which the man replies, Of course, I've just seen you do it. Blondine turns to him and says, Hop on. I'll carry you across. across. To which the man responded, Not on your life. You see, there is no real faith without trust. And if we're all honest, we would have all responded the same as that man to the request of Blondine. We, would, we wouldn't have jumped on Blondine's back for three good reasons. Firstly, there's a me factor. What if I mess it up and we fall into the, into the water? There's a second thing, that there's a, a chance factor. What if the rope broke? And thirdly, there's a Blondine factor. What if the only time he made a mistake in his whole life was with me? I believe with all my heart that he could do it, but I just wouldn't trust him with my life. Well, let me tell you this. There's a universe of difference between a tightrope walker and Jesus. He cannot drop you. I and you cannot drop ourselves. And there is no such thing as chance with Jesus. Do you believe Jesus is who he says he is? Do you believe he died for your sins? Do you believe he rose from the dead and lives today? Have you trusted him to save you? See, the only way to go from Death Valley to the summit of heaven, of, the heaven of spiritual life in, is to be carried there by Jesus. It is not possible to carry yourself there, not by your works. It is only by his grace. It is only through genuine faith and repentance. And it is a wonderful gift of God. See, we have no thing, no good to boast in when it comes to ourselves. But for the Christian, we have someone to boast about. Jesus, the one who brought us from eternal death to glorious and eternal life. Or maybe you're listening and you know what you must do to be saved. Well, I urge you to pray to God in heaven and ask that he would forgive you of your sin. Thank him for Jesus and his death on the cross. And ask God to save you, to live now for him, to devote your life to him, for him to live in you by his spirit. And that you would live from this day onwards knowing these wonderful truths that we have been saved by grace and there's nothing that we have done to earn it and there's nothing we can do to earn it. So stop racing after something you cannot attain and turn to Christ, the one who can give it to you right now for free. Father, we pray that you would help us to uh, allow these truths to sink into our minds and our hearts. May they transform us today, we pray. May you, by your Spirit, take someone from Death Valley and raise them up to that glorious summit where they can see how far they've come, all because of your work and nothing uh, that they have done for themselves. Thank you, Lord, that is uh, nothing we can do to save ourselves. Lord, we thank you that is all through your Son and his work on the cross. And Lord, we pray that you would bring many to yourself today, that you would encourage the believer to see who we are because of all that you have done for us. So Lord, help us to understand this. Help us to praise you for it. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Well, we're going to sing in response to that by singing in Christ alone, a hymn maybe you know uh, very well. And uh, again, Simon has as well as the others who will take part in this next video, have done such a great job putting it together, so thank you for that. But I would encourage you just to uh, respond as we sing this song together, uh, after all that we've heard today. And God bless you, and may he be with you through this week. And if you have given your life to Christ today, maybe uh, reach out and touch base with, with us through our social pages, 
or through our website to let us know. We'd love to pray for you and to help you through these days as well. God bless and stay safe. of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. The Lord who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live there in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain, and bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me. with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever block me from His hand. To He returns or calls me home here in the power.